I would like to have a little bit of a conversation with you about, uh, I have this, this perspective on left media um, where it's, there's people that play a necessary function by doing what you were just talking about, pointing to, um, you know, corporate outlets, mainstream media and saying they're lying. Here's why they're lying. Here's how they're lying. Um, and to a large extent, those people experience a little bit less censorship because they're still playing within the official narrative. They experience some and they certainly scream about it. Um, and they should. Everybody should scream about censorship whenever it happens often. Um, but I think there needs to be a, a part of left media that functions exclusively outside of that narrative or as, as, as exclusively outside of that narrative as humanly possible, where your sources are sources that uh, exist outside of the narrative, like Mempress News, like Consortium News, um, uh, outlets that are designed, WikiLeaks, to be antagonistic to power because they're not relying on power for their narrative. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, this is, uh, it's Chomsky, isn't it? It's manufacturing consent. They, they, you know, the way, the way that the, the media has been hijacked, if you like, is by, you know, the, the stick of, oh, well, you're not going to get access if you, if you obviously uh, do your job and are uh, holding power accountable, which is what the fourth estate does. So, I honestly believe that we uh, we need a new me media, and I'm hoping that, that that's going to change. And I'm hoping that outlets like those that you just explained, like um, Mint Press News, etc., they're going to become the new fourth estate. Because let's face it, they're the ones who are who are holding power accountable at the moment. Our mainstream media isn't. Um, so yeah, those those outlets like um, uh, disobedient media and uh, etc. They're certainly um, the. They're certainly examples of the way our media, our mainstream media, should be, and are not yeah. at the moment. I'm hoping that it's going to change. I'm hoping that we're reaching a tipping point and it's going to change. I'm hoping that you know, with the dawn of the internet and the dawn of information, that the genie is out of the bottle now and it can't be put in, can't be put back in. As much as they try and censor us on YouTube and, and Twitter, etc. They can't put that genie back in the bottle and more and more and more of people are going to find out the truth. It's just that all they're doing at the moment is just trying to uh, restrict the amount and the, the, the speed at which the, the, the truth spreads. They're so going to I, lose this fight. I, I, I agree with you in part. I want to add to it, I think, if I can. I had uh, Jared Beck on my show back in, I think, like May. It's a great episode. And if you're watching on, on the stream right now, Please go check that out sometime. We, we brought up Chomsky's manufacturing consent. And it, it was then put forth in that episode that consent has been manufactured. If it wasn't completely manufactured by the time the ink was dry on the Patriot Act, that sealed it. What we live in now and what the, the corporate media functions as now it is manufactured confusion. And that's why, um, that's why we've got the the most ridiculous headlines that as you said you know the majority of people don't read past that's why we've got um ridiculous propaganda and people like entire arms of media dedicated to getting us to care about celebrities and care about um uh, whether or not something has uh the right amount of saturated fat or gluten or this or that when you could just eat right for your blood type and be fine you know but there's all kinds of fad type it's just constant saturation of confusion and um that's why we need to i mean that's that's why we need to amplify each other that's why we need to amplify the fact that julian assange is, is languishing in belmarsh prison that's why we need to draw attention to uh chelsea manning who's up over sixty thousand dollars in fines now um Olabini just got hit with new imaginary charges. Um, they had to reimagine the charges that they levied against him because the first ones were so 
out of the the box put together wrong that <laughs> they had to assemble a whole new set of ridiculous charges um so yeah i just i do you do you think we're on the right track at all going down this manufactured confusion line of thought yeah i, I see a point there there's a lot of uh, I, they call it disinformation over here there's a big thing about disinformation i mean We've got our own government over here doing disinformation on our own people. That's what's happening. I mean, they've even got the Foreign Commonwealth Office um, funding the Integrity Initiative over here that literally is an army of people who are spreading disinformation among the populace in the United Kingdom on their own people. So it's propaganda on their own people. That is BS, manufactured BS, state-sponsored. And then you've... I see what you mean by the media. I don't. I don't say they're disinformation spreaders. Though what I say is they're PR to the elites. They're PR to the government. It's basically public relations for them. That's all they're doing now. It's their damage control, especially over here. Because let's face it. I mean, we're facing a constitutional crisis at the moment in the United Kingdom, and all the all the media seem to want to do is just describe the water. That's all they want. This is the this is where the it is. This is we'll describe. Everybody's drowning. Everybody's drowning in seas of debt and austerity, everything. And we'll just describe it. We'll just, we won't tell you how you got here. We won't explain to the, the people of the United Kingdom how we got here with 30 years of neoliberalism and, and you know, the, the Overton window shifting to the right, etc. Mirrors what's happened in the, United, in the United States so much. We won't do that. All we'll do is we'll describe, we'll describe how people are drowning. That's not, not what the fourth estate is meant to do. You know, it's almost like they get their marching orders now from MI5 and MI6. Look at The Guardian. The Guardian, literally, they wrote an article, an article that anybody with a brain in their head could see was absolutely 100% false. In the this is the uh, Paul Manafort went to the embassy thing by Luke Harding, the MI5 stooge. Yes, Luke Harding, Luke Harding, the man who got paid a million dollars for, uh, well, let's face it, writing a load of crap about him that became a movie that Assange begged Benedict Cumberbatch not to star in because it was there were so many things in it that were wrong. For instance, the one guy that Assange apparently screwed, they never even mentioned in the film, he was an FBI informant. You know, so it's stuff like that with with it. With, it's it's only it's stuff like that with with Luke Harding, especially where he'll he'll give you a truth. He'll give you a truth, but then the other ninety percent is lies. It's it, you know, or he'll give you ninety percent of the truth, but he'll miss out one piece of information that is key that will switch your way of thinking. That's the way. You do. <laughs> I've been there, I've spent days there. The amount of cameras are absolutely astronomical on top of buildings. And they're saying, oh, he walked in the front door and he didn't sign it. Oh, come on. I know somebody, I know a guy who has been sleeping outside the Ecuadorian embassy for the last six months. If Manafort had gone in there when he did, he would have seen him. I promise you he would have. Strangely enough. 2,600 cameras are supposed to be on that building. 2,600. I'd like, the, that's the number that I've read consistently. 2,600 cameras. And they all somehow missed. A guy, you certainly don't miss that guy if you're 2,600 cameras pointed on the same freaking door. You just don't. So okay. you're absolutely right. Anybody with eyes and a brain knows that Luke Harding completely fabricated that story. Um, and that story has never been retracted unless no. here in the U.S. it's still being used as proof that WikiLeaks and Russia have some tie together, that Julian Assange helped put Trump into office, and it is still being used as warranting all of these charges against him, even though the charges have nothing to do with the election in 2016. And so because that article still exists and it was never retracted, it doesn't matter if it's true or not, it's still being used, it's still being weaponized against him. Yeah, that's the whole point of it. That's the whole point of it. That, you know, that there's a saying, isn't there? A lie will travel the world before the truth gets its boots, or boots on. And that's the whole point of it. You know, people over in the United States, they're still using it as proof. Hey, Manafort went there, it's proof. 
you know it's just because it's in it's in a, a media publication we had we had a situation with the Russiagate fiasco that just went on where the FBI in their own report are linking through to um through to news reports as proof that something happened when it was the FBI that leaked that information for that news report to come out in the first place. So they're leaking their own reports that they're u- then using in the Russiagate inquiry in the in the manifesto, the Mueller, Mueller manifesto, whatever it was. They're using that. They're literally creating their own reality here. They're creating their own reality to spin. And that was the whole point of the Manafort article. It was just so the lawyer goes around there. Hey, there's no need to retract it. They've got two sources. They can't tell you what those sources are. It gives undue power over those corporations too and over those people because anyone else who reported it is then also a target. So if they try to step out of line, if they, after this, try to report what the actual narrative is or what the actual truth is and not what the narrative is, then they can just be picked up on these old crimes too because there's no statute of limitations to it. There's no period in which they wouldn't be vulnerable for prosecution under it. So it gives them this power to just reach and grab these journalists if they try to step out of line for reporting the same information. Yeah. And at the same time, you get, you know, to answer, to answer Tyler's question, it, it's, it, it gives, it gives the establishment, you know, carte blanche to just say, nah, don't like that. Nah, don't like that. And just literally shut people down and shut down re- reporting. Um, they are, they, the Guardian, etc., who are who have been cheering this this on the persecution of him for years, they have been cheering on their own demise as well, and it rewards people who go along with the government the governmental narrative. It rewards those people that instead of talking, in, for instance, people like me who talk about, hold on a minute, this is what actually happened. This is why they're after him. This is they're after him for collateral murder and the leaks, etc., etc., etc. People like me, I won't get a look in. But people who are debating whether he's, I don't know, a rapist or whether he should go to Sweden, they're getting, they're getting slots on, you know, semi-progressive shows now on TYT and, and, and Democracy Now, etc. You know, so even, so people be who are a lot clear, though. Lot. Sorry, G- carry on. GYT. GYT is ran by a quasi-libertarian grifter who's always been a quasi-libertarian grifter who found a niche in a certain type of media while the ta- while the Daily Coast was blowing up in, in the early and mid-2000s. And he found a marketable niche because there was nowhere for anyone left of, I don't know, uh, Joe Lieberman to go if they wanted a, a, a news program that wasn't delivering 100% Ronald Reagan, may we honor his name, is, you know, this is the narrative, this is the foreign policy, this is the economic yeah. policy, we're going to deliver from our news. Uh, so Jink found this niche and he exploited it very, very well. And only after 2016, when he went full, oh, we have to vote for mother, oh, you know, uh, Russia, 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 I'm going to do a two-hour long show and 85 percent of it is gonna be, we're gonna talk about some tv bullshit like that's that's when people started to go hey something's not right this may not be the guy and yeah, then at the same, at the same in- time at the same time that happened and people were saying that look at what was happening he was he was i remember the show he did it he he talked about the paul manafort um article that we talked about in the guardian and just quoted it uncritically went along with it uncritically and it it coincided Uh, while that was happening. It's always also coincided that they TYT have been getting more and more and more access. Haven't they have noticed that haven't they just covered the DNC uh, debates Mm. from within the room, you know, so you can see it's give and take there. You play along with us. You play, don't rock the boat too much. You know, don't ask too many questions. That Jordan Chariton, we don't have have him asking Donald Brazil. No, 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 no. You play a ball. And you'll get access and you'll get into our club. And guess what? He's got his foot in the door with the club now. That's the way it works. Well, the $20 million of Clinton donor money didn't hurt either. I mean, that Jeffrey Katzenberg check, you know, that'll get you some access, Gordon. Somebody gave me $20 million. I would 
feed and arm every food insecure neighborhood that I could and then give them a map to our oligarchs. But I, I certainly <laughs> wouldn't talk about how, uh, you know, Donald Trump is a bad guy or have a 15 minute segment called Loser Donald every week that I don't when I could be talking about the fact that Julian Assange is in Belmar's prison or I don't, they're openly rigging the 2016 or the 2020 primary even more so than they were in 2016, even more so than they did in broad daylight in Broward County in 2018. This is the most openly rigged election that I've ever watched before. And people are like, oh, yeah, Bernie's going to do just fine, you know, or and then when he's president, everything will be OK, you know, and like the the. The agencies and the players that are truly running how most of the public consumes their information. It is not in their interest to have free and fair elections. It is not in their interest to have a, a media that challenges their narratives. It, and so the pushback, especially as, as you were saying earlier, people are coming around to it. More and more people are starting to wake up to this. So the pushback is going to be more and more fear and more tremendous. And so it takes courage. And your show displays that courage to really, truly speak outside of the narrative. So I couldn't thank you more for uh, for what you do and how you do it. I appreciate that. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, all I'm trying to do, I listen, I, I, you know, I, I'm not infallible. I, I make mistakes. I'll make mistakes. I'll get something wrong. I'll frame something wrong. I know I will. I have done in the past. I, I get things wrong. I do. It's not very often. But when I do, it happens. But it's an honest mistake. I'm not getting things wrong on purpose to propagandize you. And that's what's happening at the moment. You know, if I had a staff of 100 and what have you, I wouldn't make mistakes. I'd have people checking my crap, which is why when the BBC make a mistake on say, and say that Julian Assange faces rape charges in Sweden, you know it's not a mistake. They've got 100 people checking these goddamn things to make sure every word is right and they don't get things wrong. So when Newsnight do a video like I saw them do, where they say, oh, well, you know, they, they want Julian Assange. Julian wow. Assange, you know, he, was, he, he released the collateral murder and, you know, it was, he got it from Chelsea Manning and the genius behind the hack. That's what they said, the genius behind the hack. There was no hack with regards to that. So you can guarantee they have said those words on purpose to propagandize you. They know there was no hack with collateral murder. They know it was a leak from Chelsea Manning, who you rightly say, $1,000 a day, she is being fined right now. Why? Because she won't testify against her publisher. So Gordon, you, you've experienced censorship on your own channel, and especially you've noticed since you read Julian's letter on there, how, how do we fight the censor censorship? And also how do we keep fighting the narrative against him that's constantly character smearing him? How do we as these independent groups and media, how do, how do, we, how do we battle this? How do you uh, plan to battle it? Christy, I talk to my chip shop owners about it. I talk to, I talk to everybody about it. I can't stop, honestly. I'm forever talking to a bit people about it, forever trying to highlight this plight and forever trying to break through the propaganda with whoever I speak. It's not just online. I'm not just on Twitter and what have you. I do it in real life as well. You know, and that's the way we've got to do it. And I really do believe there is a tipping point. It will come as more and more and more of us demand that, you know what, we can't continue with this media that is just going along with things and being public relations for the establishment. We have to have a fourth state that holds power accountable. Otherwise, you know what, they're going to go and they're going to, you know what they're going to do? They're going to rig it so all the money goes to them. But that's exactly what they've done. And then when they got bailed out in 2008, they kept all the money and they faced no consequences. And then guess what? All the money since has gone to them too. You know, we need the reason that's happened is because we don't have a press holding PI, holding the establishment accountable. We don't have them. They're going along with it, and they're going along with it for access, for crumbs, for little bits and pieces. No, I don't want to be in their club. I don't want to be in their tent. I want to be outside pissing into their tent. And every media organization should be like that. And the ones who aren't, the ones who aren't adversarial, 
they're not worth your time. So what I will say to people is talk to people. You know, talk to people. People are interested. They really are, especially if you frame it the right way. Especially if you, you say to them, what do you know about Julian Assange? And they say something about the rape. You can say, nah, he proved war criminals were war criminals. That's why they want him. And people get upset when they understand the truth, when people know the truth, they get upset because they know it's not just their futures that we're fighting for here. It's their children's futures and their children's children's futures. And we know that, you know, with the situation we're in on the planet right now, that if we keep letting them get on getting away with just war after war after war and lie after lie after lie, then there's going to be more of it. And sooner or later, there's going to be none of us. So um, the, the way that I describe it to people when I'm out talking to them and I have that quick like second or two minute elevator speech is that Julian Assange was the publisher for WikiLeaks and he's currently on trial for a 2010 publication that revealed war crimes in Iraq, Afghanistan and the torture programs in Guantanamo Bay. And he faces 175 years in prison for releasing accurate information about the crimes of our government. And that's the the most basic, simple, clear to the point way I found to describe it. And when you tell it's people so that, easy, isn't it? Andrew, yeah. sorry to stop you. It's so easy <laughs> to frame it that way. It's so easy and so truthful. Why can't the media do it? It's so easy. They don't Upton, do it. Upton they... Sinclair, the novelist Upton Sinclair, and then I'll let you get back to it. I'm sorry, dude. This is one of my favorite quotes on the planet. Uh, it says it is difficult for a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding. That's, that's exactly right. You know, if you, you, you're not, you're not going to sit on a branch and then saw the tree, are you? If you're sitting on that branch, you're not going to saw the branch. Essentially that's what they're going to be doing. You know, they they get paid for being wrong. They get access for being wrong. They get access. They get access for, for going along with the, 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 that word again, the narrative that the establishment, that the government want them to spin. That's all they are now. It's PR for the establishment. And I, for one, I'm sick of it, and I know what other people are. And you know what? They, were, they are ready for a new media, and it's growing. It really is. It's growing even though they are censoring us like you wouldn't believe. I mean, Christy mentioned the censorship there. I have the, the drop-off in the, the, the number of recommendations from YouTube is astounding. I used to get, to just to give you some idea, if my, if my video got 10,000 views, I would get about 7,500 of those views from the Google algorithm, from people suggesting my video to people who aren't subscribers based on whatever I'm talking about. Now it's 7%. After I saw the letter, it went from 75% to 7%. Why is that? I've even stopped swearing on my channel because I thought it, that, that doesn't help. You tell me. They've switched the switch somewhere. That's what's happened. People want to see authenticity and people want to be told the truth. They're starting to wake up and realize that what they are being exposed to in the mainstream media isn't the full truth and it's not... Um, wholly accurate. However, they also de-incentivize de -incentivize people from being uh, truth tellers because of things like censorship and um, also trying to make it seem as if, you know, YouTubers and outlets that are exclusively on YouTube are just either far right or on the far left. Um, but the hour is coming to an end. However, Gordon, you are willing to stick with us. But before I do um, kind of transition here, I do want to shout out to some of the uh, viewers. We have someone from Melbourne, um, Simon Eustick. Hi, thank you so much for watching. And then we also had a viewer from Argentina. I'm trying to find um, their screen name. But thank you so much. Um, you know, for tuning in, guys. And again, this is the Free Assange Vigil 9.1. This is our online independent journal and journalism conference so make sure that you do like subscribe and that you retweet us and um gordon thank you so much for uh joining us can you please give us your final statements and last thoughts before we wrap up and again you are welcome to stick with us i'd love i'd love to stop longer but i've got to actually got a live show tonight i need to prepare for that i've only got half done so i need to go away for that and it's been a but it has been a pleasure um thanks so much for doing this thanks so much for holding it thanks so much for 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 
standing up on the side of truth. And all I will say to the people listening to this is, I can't stress how important it is that we fight for Julian Assange. I really can't. Because if, if the establishment, if the powers that be, if the powerful people in the West who have lied out their way into war every single time for the last 200 years, if they get to be able to do it with impunity and they don't have people there holding them accountable and we haven't got a fourth estate, then I don't just fear for, you know, our countries. I fear for humanity. We have all, I suppose, we certainly all know of George Orwell in 1984. You know, the, the saying I have on my channel is make Orwell fiction again. That's what we need to do because we are living in an, a, a surveillance state at the moment. We are living in an environment where, you know what, our own government, our own governments, our own elites, our own people are propagandizing and lying to us in order to get their way. They're spinning a narrative that is untrue. We need to fight back against this. We need a new fourth estate and we need to start by keeping hold of the people that have told us the most truths throughout the last decade. And that, of course, is Julian Assange. It's been a pleasure to be here, though, and, and you guys are fantastic. Thank you. Now, Gordon, before you do head out, Gordon, can you please let you everyone so know where they can find you? Yeah, I'm on, I'm on my YouTube channel. He's on, on just search Gordon Dimmock on YouTube and my website, gordondimmock.com. I'm at Gordon Dimmock on Twitter, and that's all the social media platforms I allow. I can't go on Facebook. It, it, it's too... It's too sad. <laughs> it's too sad on there. But yeah, Gordon Dimmock on Twitter and obviously GordonDimmock.com and on YouTube as well.